Thank you very much and good afternoon to the members of the media and the people of South Africa. My name is Sinao Tambo. I'm the national spokesperson of the EFF. So I want to start with the introductions of the leadership and I'm going to start on my far left. So on my far left we have the Treasurer General of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Komsa Mpile Maudwe. And then immediately next to her, on her right, is the National Chairperson, Komsa Veronica Mente. On my far right, at the end of the right table, is the Deputy Secretary General of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Komsa Popi Mailula. And immediately next to her, on her left, is the Secretary General, Komsa Marshal Jamini. On my immediate left, we have the Deputy President of the EFF, Komsa Floyd Shivambu. And on my immediate right is the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Economic Freedom Fighters, President Julius Silomalem. Over to you, President. Thank you very much. Uh, my apologies. I have to address you seated down because I need the, the charger. This iPad is low. Uh, good afternoon, members of the media, the leadership of the EFF, the people of South Africa, the economic freedom fighters take this opportunity to thank the people of KwaZulu Natal province, structures of the EFF and all ground forces of the movement who came in their numbers to attend the launch of the 2024 election manifesto. The EFF has once more demonstrated that it is the only movement that has a national footprint and exists in every one and voting district of South Africa. We did this by launching the 2024 election manifesto without busing people from other provinces as the stadium was filled by the people of KwaZulu-Natal, an undisputable scientific fact that the EFF exists as a mass movement. The EFF 2024 election manifesto and all the commitments we have made are a clear demonstration that our agenda stands for the benefit of the people. We take note that despite the EFF success, the state attempted to undermine our program using tribalism disguised as cultural events and successfully failed. The EFF condemns tribalism and we must hate tribalism the same way we hate racism. And we call on all our structures and ground forces in KwaZulu-Natal Kauteng, Limpopo, Northwest, and all other provinces to remain focused and disciplined without degenerating into tribalistic tendencies. The EFF 2024 Elections Manifesto is a clear program of action, particularly our commitments on land, jobs, energy, and electricity, education, public safety, and all other areas under the clarion call our land and jobs now. Stop load shedding. The emphasis is on land. The emphasis on land derives from the fact that 30 years since the attainment of political freedom, 80% of the population continues to occupy less than 10% of South Africa's land. Landlessness is still the lived reality of the majority of our people. The emphasis on jobs is motivated by the sad reality that after 30 years of attempts at addressing the joblessness, more than 15 million capable South Africans who need jobs are unemployed and with no hope that anything will change unless the current government is changed. The emphasis on now is informed by the fact that 30 years is rather a long time for any political party to keep making empty promises. The emphasis on now is also because our people live in absolute poverty. Similarly, the emphasis on now is because our people are landless. The emphasis on now is because our people are jobless. Yet again, the emphasis on now is because the crisis of racialized poverty, inequality, underdevelopment, landlessness, and joblessness are being experienced now and must be resolved now. The emphasis on stop load shedding is due to the fact that despite many attempt, empty promises, the South African government has not brought forth a dependable electricity plan that will guarantee the supply of electricity to all its citizens. 
we remain resolute that the EFF government will expropriate all land without compensation for equal redistribution in use, create millions of jobs through reindustrialization using the state, stop load shedding, rebuilding our education system, and fix crime in this country. We remain resolute that the EFF government will prioritize rebuilding of South Africa's defense capabilities, prioritize primary health care, increase social grants, and fight for women to end gender-based violence. This and many other commitments are what will change the lives of our people and deliver economic freedom in our lifetime. We condemn this suspension of the EFF members of parliament. The timing of the suspension was deliberate to prevent the EFF leadership from attending the State of the Nation address to protect the dying ANC and the incompetent <coughs> president who is out of touch with reality. The EFF has picked up that Mr. Sel Ramaphosa continues to misrepresent the achievements of the governing party. He claims that the past 30 years have changed the lives of our people. Yet the past 30 years of so-called freedom has brought nothing to most of our people. He claims that the governing party has built strong institutions to protect fundamental freedoms and human rights of all people. Yet it is the ANC government who massacred 34 mine workers, brought daylight, killed Andris Tatani, and continued to allow students to fall in the pit toilets. He claims that we have a diverse the economy whose minerals and agricultural products reach every corner of the world while creating jobs. Yet these sectors remain dominated by whites and our people are massively unemployed. Our honest and truthful view of what transpired in the past 30 years is that apartheid only ended on paper and continued unchanged, particularly in the economy. We continue to export raw material while many of the industries in South Africa have closed since 1994 and it has worsened since Mr. Ramaphosa took over. More than 11 million people are unemployed. There are more than 3 million people in South Africa today who have lost all hope of ever finding a job. Majority of these are young people. 30 years ago in 1994, majority of landowners in South Africa were the white colonial settlers, and 30 years later, in 2024, the majority of landowners are still the settlers and their biological descendants. 30 years ago, in 1994, wealth was concentrated in the hands of a few white rich people, and 30 years later, in 2024, the economy of South Africa is still owned, and con is still owned controlled, and dominated by the very same few rich white people. 30 years ago, in 1994, more than 90% of informal settlement dwellers were black Africans. And 30 years later, in 2024, informal settlement dwellers still look like me and you. 30 years ago, the levels of black-on-black -black violence was very high. And 30 years later, the levels of black-on-black -black violence continue unabated with more than 27,000 people murdered in 2023. This 30 years of so-called democracy has only brought more wealth to the white minority settlers and condemned our people to perpetuate an endless poverty and suffering. It is the EFF that will bring about true freedom, economic freedom, and change the lives of our people. We call on all our people not to be tricked into believing falsehood by fraudsters who are hell-bent on selling strategic state-owned assets that belongs to our people. Now that we have launched the 2024 election manifesto, we are going to launch provincial manifestos on the following dates. Houghton Provincial Manifesto launch will be held on the 2nd of March 2024 at Dobsonville Stadium, Johannesburg Region, Soweto. Mpumalanga will be held on the 9th of March 2024 at Kanyamazani Stadium in Tanzania region, Mbombela. Northwest will be held on the 16th of March 2024 at Witikong Stadium, Bujanala region, Rastimbe. Free State Provincial Manifesto will 
launch will be held on the 17th of March 2024 at Zamdela Stadium, Fezile Dabi region, Sasol Bay. Eastern Cape Provincial Manifesto launch will be held on the 21st of March 2024 at Jan Smart Stadium, Buffalo City, Metropolitan East London. Northern Cape will be held on the 20 on the 23rd of March 2024 at Khalishwe Stadium, Francis Bart Kimberley. And Western Cape will be held on the 24th of March 2024 at Guguletu Stadium, Cape Metro, Cape Town. The province of Limpopo will host Telatupa Rally as the final election rally to intensify the campaign towards total electoral victory on a date to be announced in due course. We call on all our structures and ground forces to remain focused and disciplined as we move to consolidate, get our people, young and old, to register to vote and to vote for our land and jobs now and to end load shedding. The EFF is pleased to announce that on the 11th and 12th of February, we held our lease conference at the Deben Exhibition Centre, KwaZulu-Natal. The EFF list conference, which was constituted by regional and provincial structures of the EFF, said to consolidate and vote on the names that ought to be submitted to the IEC for seats in the provincial legislatures and parliament after elections. These names will ultimately be considered by the list conference committee, which is constituted by the EFF top six officials and sent to the IEC. The EFF can assure the people of South Africa, that it will send the best from within its ranks to lead South Africa, as the lease process is defined by criteria that places great emphasis on merit and competence. Some of the criteria includes that 40% of all names from the lease must be youth, 50% or more of the names submitted must be women, there must be at least 10 PhD holders in the EFF list to Parliament. A metric certificate is the minimum requirement to form part of the EFF list. An emphasis that those on the EFF list must hold and pursue post-metric qualification. All those who seek to return to Parliament must outline what they have done during their tenure as parliamentarians in this previous uh, Parliament. It is the criteria that must be an assurance to South Africans that the EFF is ready to govern and this will be defined by the character of the public representatives we elect to power. The EFF list conference was a resounding success with no incidents of violence, vote buying or intimidation and was yet another confirmation of the EFF's commitment to internal party democracy. Following this, we call on all structures to focus all their energies on the campaign for total election victory, using the EFF's manifesto as the weapon to win the hearts and minds of our people. The campaign must continue to be based on umtu emtuini mutumutu, as every vote counts in the war for economic freedom. We reiterate the call for Cyril Ramaphosa to announce the election date as his delay will not save him from his inevitable removal from office. Until then, all South Africans must continue to register to vote on the IEC elections website as the voters' roll remains open until such a time the election date is proclaimed. We take this opportunity to welcome back home and congratulate Wafana Wafana for their courageous performance and the bronze medal in the recent AFCON competition. We believe that we can build on this progress. We call on SAFA to make sure that they pay reasonable remuneration to players and the technical team for the national team and ensure that there is an equal pay for Banyana Banyan. We call upon the racist corporate South Africa to sponsor Bafana Bafana and Banyana Banyana as they are equally important to the development of sports. The EFF reiterates the call by the EFF Student Command that the contracts of all four service providers which were irregularly appointed at NSFAS 
must be terminated with immediate effect as determined by an independent forensic report. The continued irregularity at NSFAS is something that must be fought tooth and nail if we are to resolve the crisis of funding of students, and this can only be done through uprooting corruption. The EFF notes the recent attacks on Palestine, a clear demonstration of defiance by the racist, genocidal apartheid Israel, and their murderers, Benjamin Netanyahu and undermining of the International Court of Justice that ordered Israel to stop. If the bombardment and genocide of Palestinians continues, we'll be left with no choice but to march to the American embassy as we no longer have the Israeli embassy in South Africa. We will march to the American embassy as a sponsor of the war and genocide in Palestine. We are proud to announce the return of fighter Siko Kelishe as head of digital communication and stakeholder relations in the president's office. We wish her well in her new responsibilities. I thank you. Thank you very much, President and Commander in Chief. We will now take our first round of hands. So we'll take five hands in the first round and then have responses from the leadership, and then we'll revisit the second round if necessary. So I'll note you as number one. You can be number two. You will be number three. You will be number four. Do I have a number, number five? <coughs> thank you very much. Number one. Name, surname, media house. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Mudibe Mudiba from the Inside Factor. Uh, I just got two questions here for the leadership. Um, I see the EFF was the first organization in the top three to launch their manifesto. I just wanted to find out if there was a deliberate move from the leadership. Um, and the second question is re with regards to Egruleni. When you interact with ANC comrades, um, you, there's a sense of two factions in the ANC in Egruleni, some which support the EFF, some which are against the EFF. And um, the leadership of, the, of, of Egruleni, some say that there's a deliberate attempt by those in the ANC to deliberately sabotage anything that happens from the EFF, anything good that happens in a colony automatically falls back to the EFF. Do you think there's a deliberate attempt by the ANC as well to, to sabotage the EFF in a colony going into the, uh, elections this year? Thank you. Thank you very much. Number two. Um, it's, hi there. Uh, it's Natasha Perry here from SABC News. Uh, Mr. Malema, um, during your manifesto launch, and just also reading through your manifesto notes, you mentioned that the EFF would end load shedding in six months should you take over government. You'll introduce um, the electricity grants to municipalities, double social grants, introduce the graduate grants, the sovereign grants, but where will the EFF government actually find money to actually fund these commitments that you've made? And secondly, just your reaction to what's happening in the DRC, those uh, two soldiers, South African is, um, SANDF soldiers that were reportedly killed and three wounded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three. Uh, good morning. Uh, Alpha Ramushwana here from Eyewitness News. Uh, Mr. Malema, you started your address by saying that the EFF has proved that it actually has a national footprint. And, you know, the party has always been seen as a national party. And so naturally, we do expect it to fill up a stadium in or it is expected to fill up a stadium in, in the KZN where it's, it's a you know, tough terrain to maneuver politically. Why did you feel the need, or why did the party feel the need to defend itself so much from the critics? I mean, it is a national party, and it is expected to fill up a stadium in a place like KZN. Thank you. Number four. Thank you. Sorry. See, I'm Tanda Krapa, News 24. I just want to, I've got two questions. The first one is regards to the polls. Uh, they place, the, they're not a prediction, everyone knows, but they place the EFF neck and neck with the DA. Are you confident uh, that you, the, the EFF will overtake uh, the DA as opposition officially in the National Assembly? And the ANC right now is, well, the ANC leadership is in Moscow, the MPC wrote uh, a statement. It's about a letter reaching out to foreign uh, ministers, basically asking them to come and observe the election. There seem to, to be concerns around what could happen post the election. 
And this also comes after the president also uh, made those utterances around regime change at the closing of the ANC Lekhutla. What is your view on, on what's happening? Uh, we've had elections for many years now. Uh, it's the IUC is there, DECO is also involved. What's your view on what has happened where the MPC is concerned and the ANC? Thank you. Thank you very much. Number five. Uh, Junior Kumalo from Newsroom Africa. Uh, just to build on what Natasha asked about in terms of the DRC, uh, the soldiers that have been killed, wh what uh, is the EFF's thoughts around that deployment, the deployment of over 2,900 uh, SANDF officials, as well as uh, the $2 billion, uh, that is going to cost the country in terms of that deployment? And also, um, the EFF has been uh, very resolute in its stance uh, in terms of supporting King Misu Uzulu. I just wanted to find out uh, what are your thoughts about him um, having uh, basically fired the chairperson of Ingonyama Trust and then deploying himself as the chairperson. And lastly, um, the EFF is going to its uh, elective conference at the end of the year. Is there a scenario where um, the president and the deputy president um, would say, if we fail to achieve so-and-so at these upcoming polls, then we will step aside and allow other leadership to take place, uh, to, to basically take over the party. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much. Um, we, we were the first to launch manifesto uh, in the top three uh, because we had set that date for ourselves. Um, ordinarily, you know, in the election year, the ANC goes first through January 8th statement, and the January 8th statement of that year uh, effectively becomes a manifesto. So we assumed that they will have the usual and then will follow and then we'll follow each other in that order. So we were shocked that they didn't want to launch in January for whatever reason. And um, when we announced that we are going into uh, Moses Mabida, the ANC also announced that they are coming after us. Um, it's unheard of. It's something that must then teach you as a country that political dynamics have changed. The story that the ANC is a leader of society no longer exists. Um, they are tailing behind the EFF, and, and, and that should make us very proud. Um, look, the Ikurleni uh, situation will always be like that, especially on the ANC side. We, we really don't want to get involved in their internal affairs. The, the, the ANC gets upset that the EFF went to unblock a blocked sewer and then tweeted about it and they're like, you see, you see, they are outshining us. They, why, why, this thing of uh, participating with them in government, they are out, how do you get upset by people who are doing work? There is no incident in Ikurulein that can be reported in relation to service delivery, and it doesn't get attended to in less than 24 hours by the EFF. That's what makes the ANC uncomfortable. But you can learn from those activists and do better. We even go, the, the EFF public representatives in Igurulene say, well, this is not our department, but we'll ensure that we report this to the relevant authorities and make sure it's attended to. They will not disappear after that. They are going to come back to you on social media publicly that this matter you raised has been resolved. So we are a service delivery orientated kind of an organization. This morning there was a problem of water in Tongat in Eteguin. It falls under our department. Immediately when we heard that, we brought that to the attention of uh, the chairperson of the committee, who is an EFF uh, deployee. And we said to him, you must go and make sure that that matter is attended to. 
the problem with Ikurulain is that um, Eteguin is that the municipality, the way it is designed, everything is run by a city manager. So that city manager of Eteguin can run that municipality with powers vested on him without politicians. That's the power he has. Now, he's a man who is uh, who's paranoid. Every deputy manager, they call them deputy managers, DP, deputy city managers, every deputy city managers, he has declared them enemies. So when they go into a, a committee to process some procurement of this and that, ultimately he must sign. He says, no, it's a trap. They are setting me up. They want to remove me. So that municipality, more than Kaunda being a problem, the problem is the city manager who's lazy and half the time out of the country. He travels all over. He doesn't take decisions. The committee seat. Our committee is responsible for what? Almost 80% of the budget of Eteguin. We see it with piles and piles of documents that seek an approval of a city manager because you can't do anything in Eteguin without the city manager. The man is so incompetent and has got no intention to move because everything is a setup. Why can't he go himself to sit in those committees? He's holding service delivery like this on simple issues that can be fixed. Naked, is, uh, the naked eye can see where the problem lies and needs people to come and fix. When it is matters that fall within the municipality and the, the insourced workers of municipalities can be called to come and attend to those issues, we do so. I went to address a community meeting in Eteguini, and then a mother stood up there and said, there is a sewer that runs into our house, and it has been like this for some time now. The chairperson of Eteguini stood there and said, as the mother was speaking, I went behind the truck to call the department. They are on their way. I won't leave here until that matter was solved. He sent me pictures and videos at 2 a.m. that the problem is now resolved. And with him being on site, that is the kind of leadership we are providing uh, to this country. So, Ikuruleni, there is TK faction. There is Muzwandile faction. The guys were together. Why they fought and they are fighting like this, it's a problem. Then you've got doctor who is a convener who belongs to a TK stroke Lusufi's faction. Then you've got uh, this one who hates the EFF with, with passion. John Gezizu, who works with Muzwandi Le Masina to sabotage that municipality. If that municipality fails, it's Muzwandi Le Masina using John Gezizu to sabotage and blocking of a toilet. They don't want that. They even go to an extent of making a presentation in the higher structure of the ANC that participation with the EFF in government makes the EFF shine. How? Because we all have reps. Why are they? The EFF reps don't stop ANC reps from doing their work. The guys are not doing their work. They are obsessed with opulence and showing off. That is their life. That's why they can't dirty their hands and get into a manhole to unblock the sewer. A councillor of the ANC, and you comrades do not even write about it. A councillor, a what councillor of the ANC, went to physically block Commissar Tembi Musani when she was unblocking a sewer. Physically blocked it. You can't unblock the sewer in my ward. Labor, you love your poo poo. Are you not, not in my ward? You can't unblock. That's the ANC caliber of people you have. You can't unblock a sewer in my ward. It's there on social media. You can find it. 
ANC Ward Councillor stopping service delivered because it's done by EFF. And it's not done by EFF. It's a municipality. Those people, this is an MMC. The workers are a municipality. Not in my ward. In my ward, the ANC loves sewer running all over the streets. I'm not telling you theory. I'm telling you things that you can easily refer to. And I hope this uh, uh, EFF communication will go back to replay these things. Or this is what the CIC was talking about. My sister, there's just too much money shame in South Africa. A lot. We, 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 we have a lot of money. Um, just tell me, why do we need deputy ministers? Why do we need such a big cabinet? Why should a president spend 600,000 in food in a jet? Who's saying it? Are, are, is he eating golden eggs or what? They, there is just too much. Our state-owned enterprises have got the capacity to generate a lot of income for us. Illicit financial flows and tax avoidance that robs South Africa of its monies needs a decisive leadership. From corporate tax alone, if properly collected, we can finance higher education free of charge. With not corporate tax, with mining. With mining tax alone. The mining companies, including that one that killed people in Marikana, a London, London mine, which Sir Ramaphosa was passed part of, it was confirmed that they are engaged in illicit financial flows and tax avoidance because it is a general practice. It is a general practice uh, in mining. The, 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 the haves in South Africa do as they wish. They are not paying their taxes. They don't pay their taxes. And then in the same manifesto you refer to, we're talking about taxing the rich. Desmond Tutu spoke about that when he was still alive. And no one has ever howled insult on him. So I hope you won't do that on me. Because I'm just repeating what uh, 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 Archbishop said at that time. He said, we must tax the rich. This, this, this money. We don't want vet at 15%, it must go to 14% because it's heavy on the poor. It's heavy on the poor. Yet the rich are left alone without being taxed and without being made to contribute to the well-being and the socio-economic development uh, of this country. So the money is there. You remember we were eating billions during COVID. We didn't know where they came from. When they were eating those billions, can you imagine? You spend billions till to date. There is nothing physical you can point at that those billions that were spent during COVID, this is what they did. Even in the state of the nation addresses, they were pretending to be claiming all this development. They never said to you, during COVID, we built this uh, hospital. During COVID, we bought these ambulances. During COVID, with the money, we did this. They, they, they simply don't account for that money of COVID because it made them more richer. South African deployment of soldiers to DRC is out of order. It must be withdrawn with immediate effect. Not that South Africa is not supposed to deploy in DRC. We support to deploy in DRC and be in the forefront. We just don't have the army. Our army can't look after cabbages. I can't hire them in my farm to go and look after cabbages. We just don't have the army. The ANC has collapsed the army. That's why in the manifesto of the EFF we say we will 
finance the army and make sure that it's properly ta- trained and the necessary equipment needed for the success of the army is provided. The army has collapsed. How, how come the, the AK-47s just enter South Africa with ease? Look at what KwaZulu Natal has become now. Where guns are found with ease. AK-47 is associated with Mozambique. It's even on their logo. The flag of Mozambique has got AK-47 because that is a, a weapon of their choice. It has never been for us. Unless in exile, in MK and APLA and all of that. But we as a country, we don't count amongst ourselves the weapons that we prefer, AK-47. So it tells you this thing is entering somewhere. Where is the army? It's not there. There's no army. So they are sent there to be killed because they are not properly trained. They must come back home and we must stop with any military deployment until we are fit and proper. Just take a walk and look at a South African soldier walking. You see a demoralized man who's carrying a rifle and you see that rifle is heavy on him. He's not even fit to carry that rifle. They killed it. So, Cyril Ramaphosa wants to kill our children in DRC. Those rebels, they are, are well equipped. Who goes to a base of an army if you know that thing is an army and is powerful? You go to the base once you have undermined them. Huh? Base. That's why all of the army in the battlefield, when things are bad, they are called to retreat to the base. Because that's where you can regroup and attack. No, they come to your base. That's how weak you are. They come to your base and finish you off in your base. We, we, are, we undermined to that level. And it's not for the first time. We were beaten uh, in Central African Republic. Central African Republic. Also in the base. We are attacked in the base. What kind of an army is this one that gets easily attacked in a base? If, if you are saying you've got the army and with so much money being used to go and finance the ANC election campaign. Because that's what they are doing. They are sending those soldiers there. The last time, you remember, the soldiers, SG, were complaining that they are deployed. Was it July unrest or something? They didn't have food. They didn't have food. The soldiers did not have food. So who's going to fight with an empty stomach? How are you going to shoot that rifle with an empty stomach? They are, they are not being fed. The situation has deteriorated. How do you have a base of the army in Northern Cape burning down without the army having the capacity to extinguish the fire itself? What if it was another country burning our army, our army base? How is there? We're not going to defend ourselves. So many soldiers died in that base because there are no necessary equipment to deal with emergency like that. So, for you to open a lodge, SG, or to open a, this building, you are always asked, where are your safety plans? And they even want fire extinguisher certificates and all of that. Lodges of South Africa are more safer than army bases of South Africa. Because the army base has got no fire extinguisher to a point where the army base gets burned and our brothers die. On a, on a normal day, it's not war. On a normal day, it's not a war. 
You are sitting like that, the fire starts. It's not like, okay, we're fighting them. They are burning this side. We have to extinguish this side and run to the... Eh, eh. On a normal day, there is a fire coming from there. It, it burns all of you. The last line of defense. So I will never agree that there must be any army of South Africa deployed anywhere, not under the circumstances. We have to re-equip and retrain our army. They say there are two fighter jets. What do you call it? Roy, Roy Falk. There in DRC with these soldiers. They are there. We are paying for them and all of that. They have never been in the air for more than a year. For more than a year. What are you doing in DRC? Because those are fighter jets. They must go there to fight. Eh? Eh? Get decoration. Get art. In the base, they, they're using Roy Falk as art. Hey, good take. Decoration. Plum board. Oh, you, you take the whole Roy Falk, you turn it into plum board. My brother, we are not entertaining critics. We are not entertaining any critics. We made history and that's what we are claiming. When we claim our victory, we can't say we are entertaining critics. After every rally, you have a duty to come back in this fashion and give a report of how you see, you see things and how you are planning going forward. That's what we are doing. Our rally in KZN was successful and the numbers were satisfying. We filled up that stadium and were happy with it. And we filled up that stadium uh, with young people. Oh, go and look at those pictures. The youth is not interested in politics. Go and look at those pictures. I was struggling to find uh, old people there. Someone that looked old, close to old, was CD. Other than that, I, I didn't see any old person. So, we filled up that thing. We're not entertaining our critics. Let me tell you, we never had a poster of that rally outside KZN. When you live here, go to John Smart Street, you'll find ANC posters of a January, of a manifesto launch in Moses Mabida. They are here in Johannesburg. Posters off. And Lady Chedi Nepal DB, you are looking at journalists. Let's go, no, no, level la fella, la la severe di nep. Go, and yeah, John Smart, I go rumelo hole. When you live here, there is no way you can go anywhere without passing John Smart. On John Smart's road, on all the roads in Santin, ANC manifesto launch posters are there. We didn't have that. We did not have a single bus outside KZN, not one. Because if we had asked Johannesburg to, um, Houghton to bring, Free State to bring, Eastern Cape to bring, and then we bring those people, the tribalists were going to say he brought people from Limpopo. You'll never satisfy the tribalists. That's why we took a decision that no, we need to show these tribalists that KZN will never be a tribalistic province. We grew up in the ANC and that's one thing we need to thank the ANC for. The ANC has never taught us tribalistic politics. Never. From its formation, the ANC has always said, Mukosa, Muzulu, Musutu, Tanganan. There was a motto like that. We grew up like that. Those are our politics. So, Mutolust entertainment of tribalism and encourage tribalistic activities and finance tribalistic activities is scary. South Africa must rise against tribalism. We will never stop to going to KZN. We will go and politicize that province and make sure that our people are not victims of tribalism. So the tribalists want to uh, uh, make KZN a no-go area. We are not going to allow that. Our duty as the EFF is to politicize the people of South Africa. 
We did that successfully at Moses Mabida. So, my brother, we're not uh, responding to any critique. We're coming to give a report. Uh, when you have a rally, you come back, you give a report, and then we give you opportunity to ask us if you so wish on the manifesto, what do you mean by this, like that, like you are doing. So, uh, we don't entertain critics. We are, we are in charge. We run our own race. No one tells us what to do. We, we, we are the only organization, not even DA can try that, outside the IFP and the ANC in, le, in, in less than 10 years to go and organize, in, in less than 11 years, to go and organize a rally in Moses Mabid. It, it, it's a reserved territory for certain people. You, are, you guys are not allowed here. That's why all types of nonsense was said before we went in. At the center of it was tribalism. Where a person says, Malema must not come here because he can't speak Zulu. And then Mutol goes and defends such a person. He says physical violence is not allowed. But he doesn't say tribalism is violence. Tribalism, like racism, is violent. And Mtolo is a tribalist. The ANC, for the first time we, we have a leader of the ANC who is a tribalist of note, who can condemn tribalism. He, he condemns people who, who fought with that guy uh, physically. He doesn't say, but equally, this guy is wrong. We don't promote any physical violence. But we can't defend tribalism. South Africa, we are still fortunate. We still elect people on merit. We must all unite. All of us must unite against tribalism and refuse tribalists to declare KZN as a no-go area so that they can have a field day for tribalists. We must unite against tribalism the same way we unite against racism and we must never get tired. Um, my sister, you know, Ipsos only got the election prediction on the EFF wrong in 2014. And not on the EFF only, on everyone. Today, Helen Zile is insulting them, saying, no, they can't listen to Ipsos. They don't mean anything. But argue with her scientifically, Lord. Helen, leave those things of Magogo. Let's talk science. These people have never been completely out. They've never been completely out on their predictions. Ipsos told us last year when is the March? Yeah, March? Yeah, March. Last year, March. Bella, we, we, we call Ipsos to our meetings to come and make presentation. We are, we are not scared of science. They must tell us our own things. They said to us, we don't know what you are doing. We don't know what message you are spreading, but stick to that message. And if you do so successfully by December, you are going to pass the DA. So when this outcome came, we were not shocked. We were told about it before. The same way we were told about all manner of predictions as they come. Because Ipsos is an internationally credible research institution. Not that thing of DA. Huh? Yeah, Institution for Race Relations run by that boy whose mother passed away. She was a member of parliament there uh, on behalf of the DA. What's the name of that boy? He's running that thing. Onselen. Van Onselen. Yeah. That thing, how do you listen to that thing? It had on its website DA as one of their sponsors. If not, uh, what? Clients or something. So Ipsos does not only to the EFF to cooperate South Africa 
all big corporate in South Africa uses Ipsos for research. We are not using, we never gave them money to go and do research work. We say to them, come and tell us what you find in your own research, like the one that you guys are talking about. In our next meeting, they are going to come. And then they will be very critical. Here, here, these are the issues, here are the issues. They even profile leaders here, here, there. And then we hear that, we go back, we intensify our, our thing. Uh, observer missions are always welcome. There is no regime change here. What regime change? We're just going to remove them through democratic means. Whether there is a British observer or a US observer or whatever observer, they are going out. They can call any observer uh, from wherever. No one is coming to rescue them. They are going out. You know, you can say all you want to say about Mbalula, and that's what I must give you a tip about him. The guy never lies. So he tells the truth. Mara ana So he tells it not in a tactful way. So that's what gets him into trouble. But at the end of the day, that is the truth. If you remember Mbalula at the beginning said the ANC is going to get 30%. He said I will be shocked if the ANC passes 30%. That's when he was starting to be the Secretary General. But you guys forget that he was the head of elections before he was Secretary General. So he knew what he was talking about. Then he says to me, let me tell you something, my guy. You see, this guy, Cyril Ramaphosa, saved us in this previous election. If it was not Cyril, Remember that time Cyril was, oh, hey, hey, all this good thing. Hey, well, good boy, good boy. Can you are praising a thug. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> are this guy, had this conference gone anywhere and produced a different result, that was the end of the ANC. So now, after that, he has an interview. He says, I'll be shocked if we pass 30%. And then he comes, he realizes, Ish, I said something I was not supposed to say. Then he's trying to spin it. I, I was saying, for instance, <laughs> there, are, there are certain examples you don't give. Imagine when you are talking here, for instance, Julius Malema doesn't have under the hey, hey, you can't say that. <laughs> or no, it's example. Even in the example, <laughs> you can't give example about me like that. <laughs> there are certain examples you don't do. How do you do an example about your party getting a 30% a ruling party? It escaped him and he was telling you the truth. Mbalula called it before Ipsos. Or, ah, yeah, 30%. So it's done. Uh, we support the king and uh, we don't know that decision uh, of uh, what? Ngonya uh, Matras that the king has made changes and all of that. We'll familiarize ourselves with those things. But Ngonyama Trust is his. It's not his. He's not the boss. <laughs> yeah, the government is involved. I know Minister of Agriculture, what, what. But the king is the main guy there. Yeah. So if you're a trustee, you can be a chairperson. So, yeah. Anyone to be a chairperson has to be a trustee in a trust. Hmm. So I don't know if he, he broke any law or not. That of a spokesperson, shame. I, I, I don't want to get involved. It's like asking me, what do you have to say about the king firing a PA? Ngenap. Those are his people. Those are his uh, staff members. He must take a decision. Uh, there is no threshold that we have put for ourselves uh, me, me. Maybe Floyd has got a threshold. <laughs> I don't have any threshold. And when I'm, get, when I'm nominated in that conference, I'm going to accept the nomination. Yes, I'm not going to do anything uh, of uh, abnormality. All I did 
in this term was to offer myself tired or not tired, rain or no rain, sick or not sick, I did everything humanly possible to keep this organization to be what it is today. And I've got no regrets in everything, including the school. The school is there. The plans are there. Uh, professionals have been appointed. We, we, we are stuck with the incompetence man, morale municipality to approve our plans. And there's nothing we can do. Remember, two years, we couldn't do anything. So we had three years to finalize this school. We, we bought the land. There's nothing we can do if the municipality doesn't give us approvals. We tried everything. And then the Boas at that place, remember that's an agricultural land in Mahalisbeck. The Boas have been opposing the rezoning of that place. We have been in and out of municipal offices fighting all types of racist objections for us to build a school. So I said in that conference, if we don't do it, don't elect us. But we've done it. Give us approvals today. You will see what will happen. Give us approvals today and say, yes, rezoning, yes, this, yes, that. We, we, we are very good friends with China, by the way. We can build that thing in three months before conference. We are very good people with China. Friends, ah, shame. Leaving the money you're talking about of financing these plans, China is readily available to come and help. It has been trying to help even in this current government with infrastructure funding from China and they've not been cooperating because they are committed to the West and America. I think I've dealt with all the questions. Thank you. Floyd, commitment, threshold. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. We'll take the second and last round of hands. So you'll speak now or forever hold your peace. You'll be number one, you'll be number two, you'll be number three, you'll be number four, you'll be number five, you'll be number six, you will be number seven. And uh, let's proceed, right. number one. Um, Mashudu Ma Sadiq, I'm from the Star newspaper. Mine is on coalitions. With the, uh, it's a reality that the, the elections will end up in a coalition government. Um, the ATM and the PAC have sh already shown interest in joining forces with the EFF. What are the prospects there? Um, and if there are any, uh, how would it work? Who would get what? Number two. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, happy belated uh, Valentine's birthday to the National Chair, DSG, and TG, and so Richards, and all the ladies this side of the room. <laughs> anyway, shooting to the questions. Name, say name, media house. Oh, my wife from the Sunday World. And don't just talk, give them roses. Oh, okay. No, no, after this, after this. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Malima, you speak about the state that tried to sabotage uh, the EFF manifesto event at Moses Mabida, uh, which you go on to say it, uh, they were using tribalism discussed uh, as cultural events. What evidence do you have uh, about the state being involved in those particular machinations, uh, such as Ngezwe and every other drama that was happening to counter the EFF rally? Linked with that, you spoke... I think it was at the last conference about a call that you received after the, the rally from a security cluster minister. Uh, would you be at liberty to name and shame that particular minister and uh, tell us more about how that conversation unfolded? And then two, <coughs> excuse me, on a scale of one to ten, uh, one being dismal and 10 being excellent. How would you rate EFF performance at the legislature level, being provincial legislatures and the National Assembly and the NCOP in this particular term that is about to come to an end? And then uh, maybe finally for now, how realistic are your plans that you announced that you, uh, you would be able to end load shedding uh, within six months? I mean, given the great constraints that are there, the whole issues of 
uh, carbon emission restrictions and, and which you acknowledge in your manifesto, how do you practically and realistically end load sharing within six months? And perhaps as a writer to that overall about the manifesto, what do you say to those that say that the EFF manifesto is a pie in the sky and that most of the promises that you make would be impossible to achieve? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Number three. Uh, uh, morning, everyone. Morning, President. I'm Keith Tabo. I'm a former president of Black Business Council and integrated much with you. But I was roped in by Black Media Owners Association eight days ago. They said this is a they brought me as a president. I said I'm retired, but I can put my worth. And I've done lots of jobs from you know the Netherlands to South Korea on digital terrestrial. But you were our coming here with my team is to look for partnership that will look at skilling and economic empowerment because personally I've been working with a lot of industrialists, developmental economists, corporate financiers. We're looking at a model of black media because we've got 200 uh, media in the country. You've got print, you've got community TV, you've got community radio, you've got online. We believe that if we can have a partnership that works with your, your, your youth structures, we can skill them because we've got resources. We also have got a mobile hospital and doctors that we can say, this is the bus. It's, I'm not talking about the appointment, it's available. This hospital is not a clinic. It can, it can be used for pensioners in rural or in township. But also my specialty, again, because I've done a lot of uh, boxes for multi shots all over Africa. And then also I've done uh, fiber for a lot of companies. So we also have got a, a wireless mesh, which is a technology that we can deploy for broadband penetra penetration uh, in rural areas so that the members or youth can be eager to have that access and we can also develop, help them develop e-commerce and e-government services as active citizens in across the country. So I'm, I was retired, I was brought in, but I've got projects that with my connection globally from BRICS, from the European Union, I can bring a lot of resources so that we work with the youth within organizations. Ours is just to look for partnerships that are willing to utilize our services. Once more, congratulations on the work done. Thank you very much, number four. Turkmenterzi representing Turkish uh, Mr. Malama, I interviewed uh, Action SA and DA, uh, DA leader and Action SA during SONA about IC, South Africa's ICJ case you mentioned in your speech. So they said that we should be non-aligned and we have enough crime in this country, poverty, unemployment. So why are we involving uh, this, in this Palestine-Israel uh, issue? Uh, what is your view on uh, South Africa's uh, genocide case, and do you think South African government uh, is receiving enough support from uh, especially Muslim majority countries because their population supporting Palestine? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Number five. Good day, Mr. Malema. It's Kinila from Kai News. You've previously tweeted about the proclamation of the elections before the president had. Do you have any predictions for this year? Number six. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Niana Mulete uh, for RT. Um, Mr. Malema, we've just spoken about the fact that um, you are friends with, uh, with China. Um, just and in your <clears throat> speech at the manifesto, you also spoke about the fact that um, um, you are with Russia in the war against, against Ukraine. Um, Aren't you concerned that um, your stance um, may alienate the West? Uh, and if, um, if, if they, they, for lack of a better word, fight back, um, what, what, what would your response be? Number seven, we are all covered. Okay, thank you very much, President. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, my brother, let's, 
I, I don't like the discussion of coalitions before the elections outcome because it leads to people being um, reluctant or lazy and knowing that whatever happens, we are going to go in through the back door. So even in the EFF, such a discussion doesn't it's not taking place. So, but, you know, ATM, PAC, Azapo, and them, those are our brothers. Um, and whatever happens, we won't leave them behind. Uh, because uh, PAC and Azapo, they've canvassed these grounds long before us. And um, they understand these policies that we're articulating much better than we do because we're learning from them. Um, and therefore, um, whatever happens, um, uh, we'll always uh, be, be together uh, with those organizations. Um, you, you, you know, um, as an operative, you don't need any kind of material evidence to prove there was state-sponsored uh, sabotage. Because that thing of Ngizwe, we just wake up one morning, Motolo says he's a deputy president of Ngizwe. So what more do you want? When the ANC provincial secretary says, I'm a deputy president of this tribalistic organization masquerading as a cultural group. And then he comes, the same organization that he says he's a president of, stone throw away from us, wants to organize illegal event in an attempt to sabotage the EFF and then we're asked where is the evidence when it's just right there in front of you. Uh, so, and you know how these things work. Um, you will never touch um, the operations of state security or anything of that sort. You just know, and you you know how to counter them. Mutolo went to meet with the bus owners and told them not to give us buses. He had a meeting with them. And one of them told him, Mfanagit, if you still respect yourself, you must never come back to me with that nonsense again. No one interferes in my business. I don't care whether you're EFF or ANC. Don't try that nonsense with me. And I told him, I'm going to tell them. Because we have been operating buses for all political parties. Not once has the EFF ever come to us to ask us not to give ANC buses. We've never done that. We don't understand why do people do that to us. We never stop anyone bus. We never go to anyone not to give anyone buses. In KZN, where I was organizing community meetings, the ANC organizes a counter right, right next to where our community meeting is happening. And no one speaks about political intolerance. That is caused by the ANC in KZN. A very volatile province, very sensitive province, the ANC wants to start black-on-black -black violence. Why do you go to the EFF meeting? Because no one, no one in the EFF organizes a meeting because the ANC has organized a meeting. There is no such a policy in the EFF. That's why there is nothing wrong with those kids of the EFF seeing Ramaphosa uh, in a voting station going to shake hands uh, with him. There's nothing wrong with that. I do that with ANC members. And then some people who want to sound more radical than radicalism itself, they say, ah, these EFF people are, are sellouts. Why are they shaking Ramaphosa's hands? What, what does that have to do with anything? Here is a man who leads a political party, who is a well-known uh, personality in South Africa, who comes into your station. 
and then you are going to greet. There's nothing wrong. That is the highest form of political tolerance. The ANC, when you visit a voting station, they go take a buggy that is not part of anything. Once they know you are coming, they mobilize people to that voting station. You know how the gazebos are done. We do them next to each other and all of that. When you are about to address your people, they pump music. That is political intolerance. Political intolerance is not violence. It's political intolerance that leads to violence. Because if the EFF people say, but no, but our president is speaking, switch off this thing. Then they don't tolerate each other like that. Then violence starts. Everywhere. And I thought the IFP was the one that was violent in KZN and killing our people in KZN. I think the ANC killed more people in KZN than the IFP. And I think the ANC is at the center of political violence in KZN. Their level of intolerance is extreme. I've, I've never come to experience it anywhere in the country. Anywhere. I've been blocked to enter voting stations before by ANC people and old men. I know it's inefficient. And not enter. Say pinky nyana so. Brutal fruit. Mukhalabomunga. Mukhalabomunga no brutal fruit. I mean, muga. Mukhalab. Ka long term. Ya brutal fruit. I got stern. You know, I just went to him. I said, let me tell you. You can go jump up and down. I'm going to enter you. I'm not going to live here without entering this place. He finished that long term of brutal fruit. For sure he was still going to procure more. Then I entered there. Because those people of the ANC, they get bought with alcohol. So the, the level of intolerance in that place by the ANC, it must be reported to the IEC and Mukwanazi must nip it on the bud if he wants to control that province. Especially now, with new developments of a new political party in KZN. We've already seen videos where they were destroying the gazebo of MK. You will never see this fascist organization, this reckless organization, this useless organization called EFF engaged in such activities. We don't. We don't. You can say whatever you want to say about us. We don't. We, we exercise maximum discipline in everything else we do. Still, we are not enough on the faces of our critics, despite being one of the best organizations when it comes to uh, mobilization, organization, and discipline. I, man, you are now asking me about my calls with my ministers. I've got my cabinet in that cabinet, so <laughs> why are you asking me? It's the conversation between the president and the ministers. They are already reporting, already there. I'm receiving reports. So, but they were deployed. People were deployed to check if there is any bus from outside. And they gave negative report. Our evalu term evaluation, 10. We are the best. The best. There is no organization when it comes to participation in parliament that is better than the EFF. That's why they removed it now, because they were missing turning that parliament into a bedroom. So, we have kept that parliament alive. We have kept the ministers uh, accountable. We have kept the parliamentary presiding officers on their toes. We have put proposals before that parliament on how we can pr improve legislation in the country. We write laws. And, and, and they sabotage us.
I mean, the law on establishment of a state bank is ours. You, and the good thing with Parliament is that the records are there. So, um, parliamentary oversight, number one. There is no parliamentary oversight where you can't find the red uh, overalls. We are at work. And that's why these South Africans are now saying, we think they must be number one. If they can't be number one, they must be number two. Because they've made that observation. Let's take Houtim, for instance. The ANC issues a statement that our provincial secretary is earning money from Houtim legislature, and he has never been to the legislature. We say to them, Parliament thinks the good thing about them, they are public records. Go and retract that record. They get irritated with the leader of the EFF. They lie about him. A complete lie. We don't miss legislature. None of the EFF people will miss legislature without a reason. None of the EFF people will not go to legislature oversight without a reason. We've got GTU that keeps track of all of them, one by one, including our councillors. So we take this thing of parliament very serious because we know it can change the lives of our people. We were told that we are the ones who are favoring Ramaphos. I've got a very close personal relationship with the president. And we don't stay far from each other, by the way. The other day I was driving myself and he was walking. And then I went and I saw him. I parked right next to him. If I wanted to kill him, I could have killed. <laughs> I could have killed that guy. So I opened a window. When I opened a window, he turns. He's like, ah, what are you doing? Okay, what do you mean? He says, why are you driving yourself? Okay, why are you walking alone? He says, no, I'm just taking a walk. Our relationship is like that, but we disagree politically, and it doesn't make us enemies. I'm not his enemy. If they view me as their enemy, I don't have a problem. My level of political understanding and tolerance is at another level. You can't match it. No one in this country can match it. No one. I, you can disagree anyhow you disagree with me. You can insult me anyhow you want to insult me. I will still be your friend. I know what Muzwandile Masina is doing in Ikurlena against the EFF and all of that. But I won't miss his funeral if he dies. I'll be there to bury him as a brother, despite our political differences. Because I, I, I must differentiate the two. So that's the kind of leadership you get when you interact with the leadership of the EFF. Politically, very sharp, robust, fearless in character, but very good at heart. We love our people. We love our people and we can't say we love our people and have personal hatred with the people we disagree with. No, we don't want to, we don't wish them death. Load shading can end in six months. Brian Malefe is waiting, Shem, ready. Marcella Koko is waiting, ready. And many other professionals, including the current CEO, by the way, of ESCO. He's a man that can get the job done. He will need to re-invite the best engineers including the old man uh, who was the CEO before, Morocco. When you are in crisis, you bring out your best, your best of the best, including those who are in retirement. He just said he was on retirement. He got invited back to come and help. You go and look for the best. We don't have business in making money in ESCOM. That's why we don't care who's going to be what because we don't want tenders in ESCOM. 
We don't want tenders in ESCO. We want to give our people electricity. So, the coal stations are going to be used. I hear you saying, uh, no, you've, in your manifesto, you're acknowledging those uh, agreements. Eh, 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 eh. Those agreements, we'll see them after. What is number one? Load shedding must end. And anyone who's going to tell us about agreements must tell us what do we do with this crisis. We have, we have a crisis now. We can't wait for wind. We can't wait for an alternative. We are going to use coal and we are going to service our power stations. It's going to be compulsory to service our power stations. Until we are stable, then we can listen to these many noises. We are not opposed to them. We have to solve the problem now. And that's what we're going to do. We will solve it, my brother. There's nothing we have ever said we'll do and we won't do it. We'll solve it. If it means permanent deployment of ministers and the president to the power stations to, to work from there, they will go and work from there. I'm not that kind of president like Ramaphosa who goes and finds that thing of Aman Skral not working. That uh, thing that is supposed to give a uh, huh? water treatment plant. Yeah. Roy, what, what? Roy Val. Val. Ramaphosa goes to see Roy Val after the people died in Amanskran. That's a crisis. He comes back and he says, I'm going to solve this problem. He comes back. There's no any problem solved. And then you, walk, you call yourself president. Apemuna, you are a police when you are a president. When you say this Roy Val must be resolved and I need it resolved within a month, it must happen. Otherwise, heads must roll. We have a situation where people died in Amman's Kral. The president has been there. Nothing has changed to date. Why, why is he called an executive president? Because he can take that project into his office. Ministers, in a simple language, they are called assistants of the president. So when you are a minister of education, you are an assistant of the president on matters of education. You can take that power, president, any time if you don't use it properly. So you've got a man who's so indecisive. He took state security into his office. Why? Slash fund. Because he knew the Jewish community is no longer going to give him money. White people are no longer going to give him money. And he needs money to fight his campaign in the ANC and to fight his campaign in the county. He took state security. For what? To do what with the state security? Because that's not our problem. That's not our priority. So you can see that that is for stealing. Roy Fall, the man has been to Roy Fall. <coughs> Till today, Roy Fall is not waking. You make me the president of this country, Roy Fall will be fixed in a month's time. 24 hours, 24 7 workmanship. This thing of South Africa of working during the day only, I don't understand. Why do you worship night? Hey, you like night, man. Isn't the, isn't the point not to sleep and rest? So why do you think sleep can only happen at night? We need to start working at night if we want work done. And don't say to me, you are going to increase the budget. With the same budget, because this budget was going to take six months. You use it in one month, the same budget. What money? Why, why, why do you ask me, where will I get the money? The money is there. We take long on useless things. President works from Pretoria. Why is president not opening just a satellite office at Roy Fan? That in this age, 
People die of cholera because they are supplied wrong water and those people are in Tswani. Can you imagine the people of Bloberg? So, load shedding is man-made and can only be earned by men. We need men and women who are not scared to take decisions. We are here to take decisions. Not this thing of uh, a sputa running around and talking English and thinking uh, every Sunday press conference will make him an instant celebrity. We're not looking for celebrity here. We are looking for engineers who are going to find, find a permanent solution, an agent permanent solution, and will do it. It's, our manifesto is not pie in the sky. Tell me what? Single one thing and say, this is madness. Tell me why. There's no single thing. You can't say to me, why would you say you'll give graduates money? Uh, where will the money come from? They are giving graduates money now. What do you say? Graduates with no source of income and no employment are given 350. There is a doctor somewhere who's called an unemployed doctor who gets 350. Why are you doing that to kids? Why would you give a doctor 350? The same as matriculous person. They are giving people money now. So when you say to us, it's not possible what you are talking, we are not talking about something else. We are just talking about topping it up according to qualifications. The EFF says in its manifesto, every doctor who is in community service, once is going to finish in the next six months, he must be placed already. You can never say we've got too much doctors. We can take them to rural clinics. We can take them anywhere. The man here just said he's got a mobile hospital. We can put them there. There will never be too many nurses. Not too many nurses. I think uh, the input on partnership is misplaced, SG. That's yours. I think you'll deal with the gentleman after this. Yeah. Uh, ICJ Palestine, we are with Palestine, my guy. How we make no apology about that. We will never be on the side of apartheid when we are the victims of apartheid. We refuse Israel, apartheid Israel, to wipe off the earth the Palestinians. Not under our watch. We are no bodies. We are children of the victims of apartheid. With our little influence in our little corner, we shall raise the Palestinian flag unapologetically so. We don't pretend about this. The ANC pretends because we passed a resolution in Parliament that the Israeli uh, embassy must be removed. Why is that embassy still opened? They are pretending to be doing something with this public relation, ICJ. There is a fresh attack. Now, we must go back to ICJ and, and say, no, uh, you, you must implement your judgment. Your judgment must be implemented. That is public relations. The real action, if you mean it, close the Israeli embassy. We are being mobilized here by the media and everyone else to concentrate on nonsense of ICJ. Let's close the Israeli embassy as agreed to by parliament. If we are brave and stop acting like we are rushing to a multinational bodies that are, are, are toothless. We support that action fully. But we think there is a more impactful action that we can take in support of the people of Palestine and that is closing of the Israeli embassy. Cyril Ramaphosa and the ANC must stop being pretentious. Busy over nothing on the Palestinian question. Let's close the embassy. 
parliament has said we must close the embassy. That is not a declaration of hatred against the Jews. We never said we are fighting the Jews, we are fighting apartheid Israel. There's a difference. And we make no apology about that. There was a question about prediction. Huh? Yes, elections. When do you think the elections will take place? Oh, the date. Yes, yes. Aye, this guy is hiding the thing. <laughs> Aye, he's not talking. He's not budging. <laughs> I don't know. He thinks he can buy some himself some time. Look, let's, let's, to see that you are dealing with a crook, Look at 2019. It's 2019, right? 2019 election was announced during the state of the election. You know, the state of the nation. The election date was announced during the state of the nation address in 2019. You know why he did that? Because he was still hot at the time. He knew, eh, I can't postpone this. I must hit. Well, the Iron is still hot. He announced it because he knew born all ratings were like the man. Now all ratings are like ha ah, number mkondo. Or, yeah, hmm. But no, let's buy ourselves some time. Maybe these guys who will create a mistake or something and, and, and then this thing becomes more expensive for us. Because after we launch a manifesto, you must immediately release a poster which has got election date. Because as you give people the theme, you must also give them the date so they internalize it. And then they make their plans and all of that. Artsy, maybe they announce her today, we don't know. But the guy is refusing with the date. And we can only wait then he, if he wants to go beyond March, the Constitution allows him. It looks like he's got until August. Until then, there's nothing we can do. And if he takes this election to August, things will be worse in this country. My guy, why, why should we care about whether there will be a retaliation from the West we are engaged in a struggle against imperialism and colonialism. And we, are, we make no apology that we are not friends with the West. It doesn't mean we can't trade with them. We'll trade with them through our own terms. They will not come and impose themselves on us like they are doing with the ANC. We are not part of CODESA. We have never had a facilitation between the Boers and the owners of the means of production here in South Africa, and the ANC that was facilitated by Britain and all of that. The, this democracy came because the Oppenheimers left the country to go and meet the ANC in exile and said to the ANC, we are going to tell the National Party to end apartheid and you are going to come back and govern and you govern business as usual. Nothing changes. The ANC said yes. We don't have such an agreement with the West, with America, with the Oppenheimers. We don't know the Oppenheimers. Now when I saw the Oppenheimers for the first time, was there at uh, Prince Mangosutu Butele's funeral. I was like, eh? This guy is a big guy. Even the Oppenheimers get out of their house to come and bury him. And the way they were so in charge, they were not sitting down in a funeral. They were going up and down. We got to get away it or so. The open aimers himself, the owners of South Africa. So we have no time for those people. We are going to reclaim our country. We are going to work with the open aimers. We are going to work with Rupert through our own terms. He won't tell us what to do. He said, Respected businessmen, the Oppenheimers are respected business people.
but it can be business as usual. That's all we're saying. It can be business as usual. Something has to give. We're not going to be controlled by Rupert here. Who speaks to them like little kids? You must go and ask how Rupert speaks to your ministers. You can't try that with me. A white man. I don't care if you've got money or you don't have. I used to have a, a, a white a mentor in Pulukwane called Jimmy. Contompelito or something. One day he spoke to me in a bad way in a meeting. I said, oh, you must never try that. He thought I was joking. I stood up. I said, no, 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 no. No white man speaks to me like that. You don't do that. Don't do it. I don't care whether he was my man. No white man speaks to me the way Rupert speaks to your ministers. Ask Mbalula. Mbalula uta ubuja. I will tell you. Wala need Mbalula. Rupert ila mu address. I le golf on karo wei yak ailwe. Where are you going? Our address are Rupert. Babu DJ Buzumar, if you don't return uh, Praveen, I'm taking my things, I'm leaving. You must try that with the EFF. If you don't do this, I'm taking my things, I'm leaving. Sela Cheu. Aye. Don't have time for that. China, Russia, we're going to work with them on our own terms. The Chinese don't go around Africa stealing anything from Africans. Your corrupt leaders overcompensate in exchange for something personal. That's what happens. The Chinese don't steal anything. Born, they are in business. When the more uh, you give them, the better for them. Why must they say no? Your leaders are not negotiating in good faith. They are negotiating with their families in mind. That's why they overcompensate. So we have no such a relationship with China. We've got a socialist and developmental relationship with China, and we know that China will help us. Russia is not our friend ideologically. We are with Russia in its fight against Ukraine because we know it's a NATO fight. It's not a Ukraine fight. So that NATO can expand its territory and be closer to Russia and undermine Russia. For that, we'll be with Russia because we can't allow territorial expansion of imperialism and colonialism in whatever direction. But Putin is not left. The government of Russia is not left ideologically. If anything, Putin will be more aligned with the U.S. in terms of policy and ideology, except their fundamental differences on imperialism where Russia feels that America wants to control it through expanding the military base of NATO because the military base of NATO is an American military base. So we, that, that it, we are with Russia in that context, not that ideologically we are aligned, but with Vietnam, Vietnam with Cuba, with uh, China, it's a clear ideological alignment of the left forces. And that's where we belong. And we don't isolate anyone. So we are driven by development in this country. We want development. We want to rebuild the infrastructure of this country. We want the rail to work again. We want to remove the tracks on the road. And then we take them back to the railway lanes. Because our roads are not safe, they will be damaged, and the tracks on the road are not safe for the road users. We want to rebuild the infrastructure, water infrastructure of this country. We want to expropriate all buildings that are not used for any purpose to give, to convert them 
into social housing and give them to our people so that they can stay close to where they work. We are an organization in a mission to restore the teaching profession and pay teachers proper salaries so that we restore their dignity in society. We grew up teachers being respected. Today, teachers can't afford a subsidized house. A teacher who taught me driving Corolla at that time, they are still driving it till to date because they can't afford a new car. What type of government are we which neglects such people who play an important role? Seated here, you might not have passed through the hands of a policeman. You might not have passed through the hands of a prison warder. But all of us, all of us, we passed through the hands of a teacher. And we are ungrateful for what those people have done for us. The nursing profession was beautiful. Even the ugliest nurse was beautiful because the profession was beautiful. Nicely paid. The nurses nicely dressed. The nurses' faces welcoming. Not these ones that we're seeing now. Who speak to you like you, you are about to be beaten. Because their anger comes from the conditions they work in. And worse in those conditions, they are not paid anything. The policeman who chase after dangerous criminals. He is a criminal who stole 20 million cash. You go cash it, catch the criminal. He says to you, I take two and leave. And then you remember that this could be between me and the poverty at home. They get tempted. We need to reward them for catching dangerous criminals. We need to reward them for killing cash in transit criminals. Those ones, they must not negotiate with them. Because those ones of cash in transit, they are dangerous criminals. They are the army. They are the army. Look at the kind of weapons they use. Police must drop them. And after dropping them, we must reward them. We must reward the police who drop cash in transit haste criminals. We must reward the police who arrest rapists and investigate that rape case successfully and prosecute it successfully. There must be a reward for that. Today, Ramaphosa SE steals that slash funds of the intelligence. Today, the informers in communities, informers, are no longer given money. There is a, a intelligence, crime intelligence slash funds that is given to informers. They are saying each informer can be given more than 500 rand. Imagine the informer that informed the police about that gangster in Toyando, which they killed how many, 20 or something in one house, who were planning to go and do cash in transit in Toyando. And that time when they were killing those criminals at Toyando, that was the period where cash in transit in Toyando was a daily bread on the streets. They killed those criminals. That thing stopped. Because it was them who were committing it. Imagine a person who gave us that information and saved us a lot of money and life, given 500 rand. And then he's paid more than Kumbuzo in Chavin, who has got no role, nothing, except to be a lobbyist of a president. The EFF government will reward the police informers depending on the size and the magnitude and the impact of the information they gave us. That's how we're going to defeat crime. 
We need to reward informers. We need to pay the police. We need to give police equipment. I said at the rally, I can't remember, that most of you as you are traveling to this rally, you didn't see a single police van in a country that has got serious crime from Hyde Park to Ye. And Hyde Park is suburbs, that's where the police must be uh, and, and that's where the rich are. I've not seen a single police van. What about Malamule? If there's no van, yeah. What about the villages that don't have exposure? We can't have that. We have to have police visibility. Including random operations by soldiers. Soldiers must not just sit there, sit there. There must be from time to time assignments for them. So that they keep fit and their brain functions properly. Otherwise they will be consumed by alcohol. That we are going to rebuild the state. And build the state capacity to deliver to our people. We don't want tenders. Tenders are a source of corruption. Tender to buy toilet paper. How do you have a tender like that? When you've got a receptionist, when you've got a messenger, who can be sent to go and buy toilet paper? Tender to buy toilet paper of 20 rand. One toilet paper is going to be sold for 700 rand. And then you come and say there's no money. Tenders must be on complicated stuff. Cleaning tender. For what? For who? When we've got so many unemployed people, you still have the luxury of issuing out a tender for cleaning. When you could be hiring people permanently. The Boers did that. When they did a transnet, when they did ESCOM, when they did a uh, they were doing it for whites who didn't go, for Africaners who didn't go to school to come and work there. We don't have a plan about these unemployed people because we are told there is no money. Cleaning services, security guard. Why must we outsource security guards? To a point where we outsource security guards to police station. Police station to guard the police. There is a tender to, 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 to guard the police by security guards. Police are supposed to be the most dangerous armed people. They are being guarded. So, we don't want that such a tender. Police will guard the police. Especially these ones who are graduates from college. That's where their training is going to come from. That's where their practicals are going to come from. So, we are an organization on a mission. All of these comrades, it will be done with political will. You just need someone who's got a will to do it. We'll do it. We'll have the best run SABC. Not a politically manipulated SABC. Not a politically biased SABC. We need men and women of professionals to run that institution because we don't have money for it. We can't give it money. It must generate enough for itself. But people can only advertise in that SABC, if it's objective. And objectivity will attract viewership. And with viewership is advertisement. No one will be asked, imagine, you run a campaign for people to pay license. My wife was reminding me that she's going to renew her disc license for the car. She doesn't want anyone to remind her of that. Why? It's useful. For her. So she knows she must go and renew it. No one must remind her because this is useful for her. If TV license becomes useful to us and we know what we are paying for, 
Who must remind us to pay for TV license? When we've got responsibility as communities and society and we see value in that, we'll revive the SABC. We'll make it work. We'll make PRASA work. We'll make Transnet work. We'll make SAA work because we don't want profit out of SAA. We want it to generate sufficient funds to run itself. We don't want to use it for money. It's not why it was created. It was state intervention in transport, in that means of transport. Because if we don't have state-sponsored airline, only the rich will fly. All of us to reach Cape Town, that train which gets stuck all the time, we are going to be subjected to it. Only whites will fly if there is no state intervention with the SAA airline. SAA is still running today. They said they bought it with 57 rand. I can't tell you, seated here, go and book SAA flight. If you want to be late with three hours, three, you enter SAA flight at seven, you leave at ten. Now, yet we're told it's being outsourced so that it can be better. The SAA is worse than what it was under the just book a ticket and go into that thing. And the problem, once you book in the bag, you can't get out. Now I tried to leave where I am leaving, but the problem, maybe you want to leave a bomb here, especially when. Yeah. <laughs> so, why would the SAA not work with so much interest? Not only in the continent, not only in the province, in the country. The continent and the world at large wants us. We were the best airline. If we were the best airline then, we can still be the best airline now if men and women who are willing to run this thing are there. Not for profit, not for corruption, but for state development. Today, in all of this poverty, where is the Minister of Finance? What does the Minister of Finance have to say? There's nothing that is running properly. And you have no Minister of Finance. And your President, who is indecisive, has got no capacity to move on the guy and get the best man for the job. Wabana sometimes is better to have a, a sputa. Ne? I know the busy is our guru busy now, so I know pretend our guru busy man. Jalo, Enoch, he doesn't pretend anything, nothing. The man is not there. We are swimming in poverty. Obana Minister of Finance, I know to a large dresser. Say me now, Molo, no, we are working like this. We are putting this there and then remove. Oh, okay. The money man is talking now. Even in the crisis we find ourselves in, where Pravin is collapsing state entities, the Minister of Finance is nowhere to be found. Musho Uil, this government has collapsed. Whether you guys like it or not, we are on an autopilot. Thanks to the EFF, there will be government of the people that will center the development of the people, not profit at all cost, not corruption at all cost. We are running Ekurleni. We are running Jobek. We are now going for how long now? More than a year. Towards a year. Not a single one of our people has been accused of corruption. Not one. Or maladministration or soliciting bribes. We don't do that. Not, not one. And shame, they are waiting for one. Not they are waiting for one. You are waiting for one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President. That concludes our press conference. Thank you to the members of the media. Uh, you can join us in the first floor for a little tour and some refreshments. Thank you very much, President. Thank you.